There's something of a, of a serious standoff here in terms of the politics at work. So on the one hand, uh, it seems that U.S. policy is we're not sure what we want. And on the other hand, it seems in Egypt, no one's really sure who's in charge. Is it the president? Is it the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, the SCAF? Um, or is it going to be this newly, possibly reconstituted parliament? There's a lot of stuff going on here together, and I think that it would be helpful to bring in somebody who's on the ground right mm -hmm. now from Cairo. We're joined by Eric Traeger. He's the Next Generation Fellow at the Washington Institute, our man in Cairo. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, Eric, uh, right off the bat, I mean, you've said about this Muslim Brotherhood strategy, political strategy, that it is for temporary calm and it is for a confrontation delayed. This was in your foreign affairs piece, um, which I think really laid out all these dynamics incredibly well. What do you think happens tomorrow? Do we think that you're on the ground there, you're talking to people, you're, you're having uh, chats with folks who obviously have their finger on the pulse. Is the parliament going to try to reseat itself? And if that happens, is there a possibility that the military could actually use force to repel it? Where, where are we right now in terms of that? Well, we're right now in a really ambiguous moment. The truth is that nobody knows what Mohamed Morsi's decision to reinstate parliament yesterday means. That includes, frankly, the Muslim Brotherhood. Today I spoke to two Brotherhood parliamentarians, neither of, neither of whom knew whether they'd be returning to parliament tomorrow or, or earlier today. Um, so, so there's just a lot of ambiguity. Also, although the Brotherhood is calling for mass demonstrations to support Mohamed Morsi, a younger Muslim brother told me that it wasn't very serious, that only uh, Cairo-based brothers had been asked to participate, that they would not be reoccupying the square. So it's really not clear what this means how much the Brotherhood is really willing to up the ante against the military right now, and we just have to wait and see. So you don't believe that this is the moment of, of real conflict coming, but do you think that at some point in the future that this could actually become violent, or do you foresee this continue to be sort of political wrangling, people going to the Supreme Court, still believing somewhat in the institutions that are in place right now in Egypt? Well, look, the long-term trajectory of Egyptian politics and of this transition is for a conflict between the Brotherhood and the military. For the most part, that's been the story of the transition. It's been a low-flame conflict in which both sides have been very hesitant to use force against one another. Could that change? Possibly. I definitely think that had Morsi not been elected two weeks ago, you would have had violence. But that's something that the Brotherhood definitely wants to avoid because it doesn't hold the weapons that the military is frankly worried to use uh, because of how powerful the, the Brotherhood is on the streets. So what I think you're going to have is many episodes like this in which the Brotherhood tests the military, tries to up the ante, and ultimately negotiates to improve its own position. This could go on, frankly, for years. Eric, this is Amy Holmes here. In your foreign affairs piece, uh, you said that in your talks with leaders literally just a few days ago, that they intimated that they could live with uh, the Supreme Council or rather the armed forces, uh, you know, trying to take legislative power. And here we are today with what seems like it's going to be a head on confrontation. What is the mood in Cairo? How do citizens feel about Mercy's latest move that tomorrow could end up in confrontation? It's actually very mixed. You have to remember that Morsi got 51.7 percent of the vote, which is to say that nearly 50 percent of Egyptians who voted voted against him. Um, there's a lot of skepticism here about the Brotherhood, a lot of fear of what the Brotherhood, which is a secretive organization, might want to do. Um, and even, frankly, people who supported Morsi are just not really sure that now is the moment for a confrontation with the SCAF. And I think the ambiguity of the Brotherhood's position today reflects that. Again, Anything could happen. Uh, this could unfold tomorrow, and it could be quite tense uh, once again. But the mood in Egypt today that I was sensing and that, you know, Muslim brothers were intimating to me is one of a wait and see. Remember, it's very, very hot here. Ramadan is coming in two weeks. Uh, this might not be the most opportune time to start a conflict with the military. No question that Morsi threw down the gauntlet yesterday by recalling parliament, but it's not clear how far the Brotherhood is willing to go right now to make that happen. In the future, no question that the Brotherhood will, conf will confront the uh, military. The question is about right now. Buck, you know, I know that the news that Morsi may come here and visit with Obama by chance or design. 
Um, I know that that's sort of our news peg for this, but I'm, I'd like to just ask you quickly um, if that's actually something, playing devil's advocate, to be all that upset about. I mean, if we all agree that Egypt is sort of a hot spot that we need to be paying more attention to, and I think this administration has paid um, a almost a sort of a, a criminally negligent little amount of, of attention to. He was elected democratically, quote unquote. Wouldn't you want our two leaders to meet? I mean, if you're looking for encouragement in, in Egypt and in our relationship with Egypt, I guess you can find in the fact that it could be worse. It's definitely not good. Well, we know so, they've already so been talking. I mean, Obama's already been talking to the military. Right. In, 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 answer, in, answer to your, in answer to your question, not, not to be overly flippant, yeah. um, the, the fact is this. I don't think that there are any good options for the U.S. Eric has said that before. Um, I think that that's a recognition now that there's nothing we can do here that solves all problems. No. Um, and the Obama administration, in this capacity, being willing to sit and talk with the new president of Egypt, uh, you know, this is this is an important thing. I, I don't know. Right. I don't know how you can completely get around this. Are you going to shut off the democratically elected? No, certainly that would be worse, right? And, and there are some. We could actually, if we could show, uh, there's a presidential complaint line that they've started now. Actually, in Egypt. Um, in Egypt, yeah. They, they've actually now, and they they lined up a thousand. There you go. They lined up a thousand people over the weekend. Now that's a thousand out of about 81 million. But they lined up a thousand people who are able to voice complaints. Here's the thing. This is the way. It is in Egypt right now. Right. We, this is the government that we have to deal with. So I think the Obama administration has to establish red lines and has to be willing to say this is unacceptable to us and enforce those diplomatically and otherwise. But I don't think that completely shutting them out is the answer. Exactly. I don't know.